I would like to draw your attention to Matthew Gospel chapter 5 verses 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. In the first B attitude, the Lord Jesus Christ said in verses 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of God. So once when you are recognize your poorness, once when you recognize how destitute and how wicked you are, the next step that will happen in your life is that you will mourn for your sin. Once when the Holy Spirit does the initial work in you showing how corrupted and how wicked and how rotten you are and leaving you completely stripped and, and humble in the presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit will lead you further to look into yourself and to mourn for the sin that you have committed in the past. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 10, Paul writes, Godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. There are godly sorrows and there are worldly sorrows. People in the world, they are sorrowful for many reasons. They are sorrow because of sickness, they are sorrow because of pain, uh, because of material loss and because of wounded pride and there are many reasons people in the world are sorrowful and they mourn. But people who mourn for sin, people who mourn because they come short of the glory of God, they have hurted God because the sin not only causes damage to themselves, it has causes a great damage to the Lord and to the neighbors and to the people around them. So if they would genuinely look into what and to where the sin has led them, they would really mourn and weep. Once when they are sorrowful, that will lead them to repentance. A beautiful example we find in the book of uh, Luke Gospel chapter uh, 15. This is a story of a prodigal son. Prodigal son went away from the father and when he was experiencing the consequence of sin, he said to himself, I perish here with hungerness. He become hungry, he become destitute and there was no way that he could live a wonderful life. But when he recognized his wretchedness, he made up his mind to come back to the father. And when he came back to the father, he confessed, Father, I have sinned. What actually happened in the life of this prodigal son? Sin has driven him to the grassroot level. Sin has caused him grief. Sin has caused him a terrible sorrow. And man did not linger there. He got up. He said, let me go back to my father. And he changed his mind and came back to the father. You know, the letter to the Corinthians by Paul uh, made a tremendous effect. In 2 Corinthians 7 verses 9, the letter of Paul to the Corinthian church produced sorrow. And that sorrow has made them to repent from the sin. Some of the sins of the Corinthian church were not named even among the worldly people in the world. The sin of the Corinthians so terrible that they were not found even among the worldly people in his Paul's time. Such were the sins of the Corinthian church. But the letter of Corinthians by Paul has really caused them to repent. The repentance refers to a desire to turn from sin and restore one's relationship to God. Repentance is not merely sorrow, sorrow for sin. There are many people who weep and mourn, but you know that itself is not a repentance. Yet people mourn and weep and yet they return back to the same old life of committing sin. The example we find the life of Judas Cariot and Yesa. Both of them repented, I mean both of them uh, committed sin and both of them mourned and the way they wept bitterly but they did not repent. So it says in Hebrews chapter 12 verses uh, 17, Yesa found no place of repentance though he sought it diligently with tears. He wept bitterly but he did not repent. Remorse and tears often accompany repentance but they are not repentance in themselves. Remorse and sorrow will lead, will produce a kind of a sorrow but they are not in themselves a true repentance. In Matthew Gospel chapter 21 
verses 20 to 32, the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, telling a parable. He said in the parable of the vineyard, the first son refused to go and work in the vineyard, but then later he repented, changed his mind, and then went and actually worked in the vineyard. So, what is repentance? Repentance is not only feeling sorrow for your sin. Repentance is changing your mind, living the sin and turning towards God. That's the genuine repentance. So, Judas carried, wept and moaned. He did not repent. Jesus sought and worried uh, diligently, but then he did not repent. He was lost. But the genuine repentance is those who moan and weep and turn from sin and turn towards God are the true repentant penitent sinner and they shall and they shall be blessed if you uh, look into the sin of peter and judas carried the sin of peter is terrible than the sin of judas carried now judas carried committed sin before seeing the suffering of the lord jesus christ of course he was not ignorant of the sin but he was ignorant of the consequence that jesus would Jesus Christ would endure because of his betrayal. When Judas betrayed, he didn't know actually to how far, to what extent Jesus would suffer and eventually die. He never knew exactly what would happen because of his betrayal. But you know, when you look into the sin of Peter, Peter was looking the suffering of Jesus with his own physical eyes. He knew exactly what was happening because he was there when Jesus was suffering. In spite of seeing Jesus suffering right before his eyes, Peter denied three times. In fact, he cursed Jesus. So Peter sinned while Jesus Christ was suffering. But Judas sinned before Jesus suffered. So the terrible sin is the sin of Peter. But Peter repented and then he came back to Jesus Christ and began to follow the Lord Jesus. But Judas carried, though he wept bitterly, he did not repent. So what is genuine repentance? The genuine repentance is look at your own corruptness and know your tragedy of sin and know that how bankrupt spiritually you are. And the sin that you have done, outright sin that you have done in your life, when you really consider all the things that have really caused God a great, that has grieved the heart of God, that has caused a great damage to the kingdom of God, and not only that, your whole life is ruined because of the sin. When you realize that, you will genuinely repent, and the Lord will help you to be comforted, the Lord will enable you with His enabling power of the Holy Spirit to, will, to live a righteous life. We are, all of us have come short of the glory of God. We all of us have fallen short. We haven't become like Jesus Christ. So when you honestly look into yourself, there are things to set right in your life every day, every moment. When you honestly check into your life and confess your sin, moan and weep for your sin, when you ask God to pardon and forgive you, the Lord will forgive, the Lord will help you to get away from the sin and to live a righteous life. We haven't become like Jesus Christ. Therefore, when we repent genuinely, when we mourn, we shall be blessed. We shall experience all the blessings of the Lord when we really consider how terrible the sin is. When we mourn, when we seek God, we shall be blessed. May God bless you.